Alright everyone, as for the moment anyway, I seem to have exhausted my Thomas collection. As requested, I'll now move on to my very expensive but also very unusual LEGO collection. And so in these series of reviews, I won't be showing you all my LEGO sets, but some of the strange, wacky, and just weird sets that have been released by LEGO and that I own. Today I'm going to be looking at the Aquarator set, but first, because it's almost Christmas, have a look at two Christmas theme sets which I've received both for free, which are the Reindeer and the Snowman. So let's have a look. Okay, the Snowman. I received this set for free as being part of the LEGO Club Australia member. As we can see, it's quite a nice representation of a snowman. It's got all the necessary features. The carrot nose, top hat, a broom, and of course, the coal buttons. The bow tie is a very nice touch, and as we can see this loop up here is so there's design that you can hang it on your Christmas tree. If we have a look at the instructions which are given to us, we can discover that this is actually a creator set. If we, un if we unfold them, we can see very simple instructions and a very simple build. There we go, and then now we can see that we turn it over, and we're all done. As usual, we've got some advertising of other LEGO sets here. So this was a 2010 model, and as you can see, it's got a strange product number, 30,008. Now, this being in all, is a nice model. However, there's a few things that I find a little bit strange about it. Firstly, I believe LEGO could have put something else here, because this strange absence of a smooth piece or something gives a very sort of unfinished feeling to the bottom of this. Secondly, it's very flat on the back. We can tell it's been designed as an ornament seat, because if you just stand it up, the back is very flat and boring. And thirdly, the arms are not in scale with the rest of the body. It's nice to see that LEGO has gone and put moving arms on them, however these arms, which are originally battle droid arms from Star Wars, simply don't fit the size and bulk of the rest of the Christmas tree. Maybe some of these on joints would have been slightly more appropriate. What are your thoughts? A good model? As I say, it is a very good model, especially since I got it for free. Now I move on to this year's model, which is a reindeer. Very interesting model of a reindeer indeed. We can see that unlike this set, which is very Christmas themed, this one is very, although a reindeer, un Christmassy because it has a black nose. So this is just an ordinary reindeer, rather than being Rudolph. So as you can see, it's got nice, it's got movable legs, which are a very nice touch, and a movable tail. It's very nicely detailed and coloured, and it gives a very good feel about it, even the horns, as opposed to this one, which as we can see, is designed an ornament, so it's very flat. So a very nice feel to this. If we have a look at this one's instructions, we can also see that this is a creator set. Once again, with simple instructions, and a very self-explanatory, just like so. A little bit more complicated build, that's because it's got more pieces, and some more advertising. Strangely enough, this set is not actually available in Australia yet, yet it's being released in Australia, and I can't find it in any of the catalogues. Tell me if you say otherwise. And so now I think, me, I personally, actually, as, was, as suggested by another, another family member, think that to make this a little bit more Christmassy, we can simply do something as simple as finding a red star piece, as we can, sh as I can show you here. There we go. Simply add a red star piece. It's a whole more Christmassy feel now, because it's Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. So that's enough of these Christmas theme sets. Let's move on to Accurators and see one of these very interesting sets from a very amazing. Alrighty, this is an Accurators set from circa 2007, I think, but I can't quite be sure. Might have been 2008. Now we look very expensive detailing on the cover, and we can see reasonably clearly what entails the set. The crab here, this little person with this vehicle here, this small vehicle, the main submarine, Submarine 21, and the treasure which this crab is meant to be protecting. Interesting to note that this was sold in multiple countries because we've got the includes firing action, in three languages, Spanish and whatever that is. Now this is a huge box. This is my arm next to it. This is a very big box. 
it 40 centimeters by 30 centimeters, if not more. And if we look on the back, we can see a reasonably good description of the features involved in the set. Firstly, we've got this whole idea of the decals of the underwater with this rim and these dials. Now we move on to the submarine features. We can see the submarine here with the person here once again. We can see it's got the shooting function, the front can detach, the control room, and the robot actually tucks away inside. Now we can see the functions of the crab. We've got movable legs and chomping claws. Here, as well as a link to Lego, we've also got a little diagram which shows all the sets released in this series. And then we have typical Lego instructions around the edge. So let's have a look what's actually included in this. Alright, so here we can see the contents of the set. This, as you can see, this main submarine, the small little treasure and the skeleton, and the crab. But first we'll have a look at the instructions. Very nice, big instructions. Turn them on a side for a lot of it. Very detailed, well, you know, Lego typical building. However, this is still in the time before we had, you know, which pieces were needed in each step. As you can see, we look on the back, another big version of this. Propaganda, and a parts list. Now we can actually see there are a lot of spare parts left over. Surprisingly amount for the set, especially when some of them, like this piece, is not used anywhere. There is no double, it's not a double piece, it's just never used. Interesting. We've also got these stickers here. Now, I applied these myself, these are not actually on the decal sheet, and these seem to have no place whatsoever. So I'm wondering what they're doing on the sticker sheet. All right, let's first have a look at the submarine. Now you can see it's a very nice submarine model. It's very sort of, looks like one of your big, you know, normal sort of submarines. And then we start to explore it and it's actually quite different. So let's have a look at this front section here. Nicely round, and as we can see, it actually opens up to reveal this little buggy thingy. Let me close that down again. Now we can see the shooting function. If we pull this back, boom, there we go. And so now we can shoot out one of these projectiles, one of the newer style projectiles with the hollowed out section as opposed to the big ball in the end. We've got these which can move around, which some people think is good. I find it very frustrating because they get knocked. And these which are spin and 360 degree movable. Now we can move on to this next part here, which is the top section, which actually can be removed, as I can show you to gain access to the cab inside. First of all, look, the top section is very nice with a very small periscope there. And if we have a look, here it is. We open up this here compartment. Out comes our little exploring robot, which is listed as Submarine 2. It's a very nice little fun and play value in there. So we slide that back in. And now we lift this off and have a look at what's inside. So we can see this is the actual inside of the vehicle. Oops, didn't mean to break that off. These are those very tight Lego doors. Very hard to actually take off without breaking. They're meant to pivot, but you know, as we can see, they're not doing quite the job that they're supposed to. But anyway, we can still see inside. And so we've got another driver here. If we spin this around. We've got the driver with his little dials, a screen showing what's on that, what's happening. And he's got a full diving kit. So we've got the masks, and the fins, a gun, a jackhammer, oxygen tank, lift off this back section here. We've got tools and we've got an engine here which is leading to the rudder because the engines are actually out here. So very nice interior detailing from Lego on this set. I was very pleased with the amount of play value because so much is going on. All right, and now we can have a look at the back half of the set. We can see that they spin. As propellers, these move, these spears, which you can't really pull out, but you could. Oxygen tanks and the movable rudder. All right, very interesting. Very nice set there. Now we can move very quickly onto this. This is just simply a couple of pieces of Lego tied together with some seaweed, a man with a rifle piece, which is a very nice touch, and a box full of coins and also some jewels. Now, if we have a look at this crab, this crab is very interesting. It, it's very, it's a decent size but not huge when you compare it. Like, obviously it's huge compared to the people, but not huge when you compare it to this. And we'll see it's got these functions such as the snapping claws, the moving teeth things, 
and the moving feet, as you can see. However, you know, it's a very nice, but there are actually quite a few problems with this. I mean, there's not much to review here. Let's have a look at it. It looks very much like a crab. Little eyes hidden back in there. So yeah, this is a, quite a nice set, but however, there are a couple of problems. Yeah, you know how I was saying how big the box is? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, Lego, but this simply isn't good enough. Why do I have this huge box, really nicely decaled, and I really want to keep it, yet the set inside takes up, what, half the box? Maybe? When it's inside, it takes up even less. So, Lego, why would you go and, like, a huge box overflow right here? And so imagine all the voids that would have been when it was in bags. Okay, let's move on to the faults of the submarine. Now, the submarine, it picks up nicely and stays together reasonably nicely, despite the fact that, you know, it is designed to have this front section here detach so it can, you know, rub off by itself or whatever. However, I have to say, it still is quite a fiddly model and doesn't have as much play value as it possibly could. Especially because, here we go, if I just, once I reattach this, one second, there we go. This opens, and this going in here actually took a lot of working, and a couple of bits actually to be modified, because there are no instructions on how to put it in. If we do this, it doesn't close, if we push it up any further, what happens is this. Nothing again, and then that happens. We shoot the missile out. So it's actually quite a struggle to find the perfect sort of sweet spot where that fits in, and there are no instructions on how to do that. And I said, is these things moving around. It gets very frustrating when you're trying to play with it because all they do is move, it's a little touch and they move. And if you've got a little bit of OECD like me, then you've got to have them straight at all times. The next part is that these spears, which I think are meant to be shootable, don't actually come out. But that may just be something to do with me shoving them in. So not actually as many faults on the submarine as you might think, but the crab, well, it's a good attempt by Lego, but unfortunately it's a bit dismal, as I said, it doesn't really stand up and suffers from like, I don't know what you call it, too thin itis. Because as you can see, like, its body is very oval shaped. And so we get these legs which really don't stand up very well, so it's not very poseable, this crab. And these legs have very, very limited movement, only, they only pivot and go like this, and so they're hard to stand up, but because they're so close together, they get in the way of each other. Now, the next thing is that we can't really see anything in there. Like, what is his eyes or whatever? And the fact that his claws, they move a bit, but not very much. There's not much movable room on these claws. A little bit, but not enough to really, really bring this um, character to life. So what do I think? Well, all in all, it's a very good set. And as I received it as a present, I can't actually tell you how much it costs, but my guess would have been about $60, $70. So it's a very good Accurator set, and actually, it was my favourite set from the line, because I saw other ones uh, elsewhere. There are a few minor tweaks that could be improved, as I said, but overall, there's, me there's many or less problems that are with many other LEGO sets. So, there you go. The Accurator set, as well as these two festive theme sets. Alright. That's all for this review now, but don't worry, there'll be other parts coming. Next time, I'll either be reviewing my LEGO soccer set, yes, that's right, LEGO's done soccer, or some LEGO games which I've purchased, and see whether they're really up to the scratch of a board game, or they're just a LEGO brand. Alright, that's bye for now, but Merry Christmas and have a Happy New Year from Trains. Mm -hmm.